This episode of the DSP Project is brought to you by PMC, Ultimate Speakers, and Prime Acoustic, take control of your room. Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, your weekly fix of music production and technology. I'm your host, Rupert Brown, and we are still on our series on studio monitors. This week, we're going to be talking about positioning, and to that effect, I have uh, uh, put together my top 12 tips for uh, studio speaker positioning. Um, now, some of these things are going to sort of touch on acoustics. Now, acoustics is a far bigger topic for me to take on in this short little video, um, or even for this series, really. So I am going to have to brush over a few things. Um, but if people are really interested, then maybe we'll look at doing a, a, a series just dedicated to acoustics, because it is a, a very big and interesting topic. Okay, so... S number one is symmetry. We're trying to get a nice even picture um, from your left and right speaker. So the last thing we want to be doing is stuffing you up in, in a corner somewhere. You're going to get bass buildups in the corner. Um, so if you can, you want to be sitting in the, the center of your room. Uh, tip number two is if you can, again, uh, it's best to have your speakers firing long ways down the room, room, down the length of the room. So if you're sitting at your desk, you should be looking at the short wall in front of you because basically we're trying to get as much distance as we can between the, the rear reflective wall behind your head. Um, when the, uh, the sound comes out of the speakers, it hits your, your ears, but also hits the wall behind you and bounces back and comes back to your listening position. So the more space we can have back there, the better. Tip number three is a very important one, the equilateral triangle. As you will no doubt know, an equilateral triangle is a triangle with uh, three equal sides. So if you have a look at this little image that I've prepared to help you out, um, you can see that there is an equal distance between uh, each of the tweeters on the monitor shown and between the, uh, the ears of the person at the listening position. Now, this particular person doesn't have any ears, which is quite a tragedy. Uh, just to interject there, Rupert, uh, a good way to check if you've got your equilateral triangle set up properly is if you look at your speaker uh, and turn your head directly at it, you shouldn't be able to see the sides of it. So if we look over our man's shoulder to the left, you can see that uh, he can only see the front baffle, and if we look over his right shoulder here, you can't see the, uh, you can't see the sides of the speaker. Tip number four uh, was with regard to tweeters again. Um, you want to have the, the tweeters facing, pointing directly at your ears because high frequency content is the most directional of, of the sound frequencies so it makes sense that you want to have the, the tweeter lined up directly in line as opposed to having the, uh, the driver, the full range or bass driver lined up at your ears. Tip number five, uh, you don't want to have the tweeter sitting in the vertical center of your room. So if you've got a room for easy math's sake, let's say you've got a two meter high ceiling, you don't want your tweeter to be at, as, at exactly one meter high um, because you're going to start going to start getting issues there. So it's better to have your tweeter slightly off axis with your ear um, in order to make sure that it's not in the dead center of your room vertically. Uh, number six is avoid having your speakers too close to the walls. You can start getting uh, boundary interference problems. Um, basically, you don't want to have your speaker sitting hard up against a, a wall because you're going to start getting uh, some more uh, acoustic issues there as well. Step number seven uh, is regard to room modes. Um, you don't want to have the same or uh, multiples of the same distance between the walls on the side of your monitors and the walls uh, behind your monitors or if you're sitting at your desk in, in front of you. So again, easy math, if you've got a uh, one meter from your monitor to the side wall, you don't want to have one meter to the wall behind or two meters or 500 mil, any kind of uh, multiple um, because you're going to start getting, uh, you're going to get issues there again um, with, uh, with room modes and certain frequencies building up. Tip number eight is regard to subwoofer. Uh, now, as we said, the tweeter and or high frequency is very directional. 
base is omnidirectional, which means you can't really tell where it's coming from. So it's not so important for uh, the subwoofer to be symmetrical. It doesn't need to be in the center of your room. That being said, we want to keep the subwoofer out of the corners of your room. Um, now it's an old trick, uh, more of a hi-fi thing. Sometimes well, people will put, or home cinema thing, put their, their subwoofers in the corner of the room. And initially it might sound better because you get more bass, it sounds a bit louder, um, but that bass isn't actually in the, the content of your music. And that's what we're trying to focus on here. We're trying to get a, as accurate a picture of the information that's being sent to the speakers. So uh, any extra bass that's being caused by a buildup in the corners of the room is just putting you off the, uh, off the true scent of what's really happening in your music. Number nine is uh, a tip for positioning subwoofers, which, is, which I think is kind of interesting, is with regards to the acoustics in your room again, you can actually swap the, the listening point and the, the source point, and you'll get the same acoustic issues happening in the same places. So what this means is you can take your subwoofer and prop it up in your chair in your listening position and then load up a something with an even bass, maybe a uh, just a synthesizer running some sort of a sine um, sequence uh, and then get your, get your head down on the floor and, and on your hands and knees and move around where you could potentially place your subwoofer. Uh, listen carefully and you'll hear in certain places it will sound more even across the different uh, the different notes and that's where you want to put your subwoofer. Uh, and so then again swap the, the source and the listening point. So take the subwoofer and put it down where your head was and that should be the best place to position your subwoofer in the room. Number 10 is with regards to stands. As I said before in the, uh, the Prime Acoustic Recoil Review, I prefer stands over having speakers on your desk because of the, um, the decoupling problem with your, your desk vibrating. I can't do it here because I don't have enough space. But if you do have enough room for it, I would recommend using stands over having your speakers sitting on your desk like I have here. Um, but it's worth noting, if you are using stands, the equilateral triangle rule is definitely still in effect and uh, most important, which is why I have uh, my speakers here on the desk as opposed to on stands. To keep that equilateral triangle, um, that's what I've had to do. Point number 11 is with regards to where your head should be in relation to your the length of your room. So basically it's 38%. So if you measure the length of your room and times it by 0.38, it will give you a uh, it'll give you a distance and that is the distance from the the front wall, the wall that you'd be looking at sitting at your mixed position to where your head or where your your ears should be. Um, and tip number 12 is that the last 11 tips aren't, uh, they aren't gospel, they aren't set in stone and the most, the best piece of advice or the best piece of equipment you have for finding the perfect place for your speakers are actually glued to the side of your head here. Um, listening, again I know I keep uh, going on about it but listening is the most important thing. Now. The chances are you're going to have to make some kind of compromises in your room because it's going to be shaped differently a certain way or you're going to have certain bits of furniture or whatever the reason is. So uh, it's important that you use these points as a, a good starting guide to get to close to the best position but then try pushing your speakers back a bit, try bringing them forward, close to make that equilateral triangle a little bit smaller, make it a little bit wider. Um, just try all of the um, the movement that you have that's that's available to you. Use your ears as a, uh, a musician or a producer, an engineer, whatever you call yourself, you're gonna have to make decisions uh, on your music or other people's music um, and trust your own ears and trust your own hearing. So it makes sense that you, you have to use that when uh, setting up your gear or setting up your listening environment as well. Uh, that has been my top 12 tips on studio monitor placement. Hopefully that's helped some of you out. Um, if you would like that all in a nice PDF, I haven't actually done that, but if I can get say eight comments, if you come down to the dspproject.com, if I get eight people who ask me for the PDF, then I'll, uh, I'll put the time aside and I'll, I'll make something for you guys and put all the images in there. Um, to try and make it a bit easier than having to rewatch this this whole video again when you're trying to trying to set up. Uh, so now on to our sponsors. 
First of all, PMC uh, Ultimate Speakers. Uh, as you can possibly see, I've got a, a pair of PMCs behind me here. I've been using these for probably about two months now, um, and I, I love them. They're just, they, all my mixes are definitely translating better, uh, getting better bass extension. I was um, concerned before hearing them that I thought having the, the smaller driver, I wouldn't be able to get the low bass out of them but they, using their transmission line technology, you really do get that uh, enough bass for the size of my room. Uh, I don't use a sub with these either, and uh, I sort of make sort of fairly bass heavy music and I can still hear everything that I need to. Um, so a great pair of speakers. Now in the um, spirit of this studio monitor series, I'm not gonna tell you to buy them, but what I am gonna do is tell you to listen to them. Um, if you are thinking about buying speakers and want something a bit more professional, then I definitely recommend giving them a trial and, uh, and see whether you like them as much as I do, because uh, I do think they're great. Next is Prime Acoustic. Take control of your room. Prime Acoustic are a company that, funnily enough, do acoustic solutions. Uh, you may have seen my review on the Prime Acoustic recoils, which you see behind me. And uh, they have very kindly agreed to give us some Broadway panels, which are acoustic panels for your wall, which should help treat some of the commonly found acoustic problems in most uh, small home studio type rooms. If you would like to win these, all you have to do is head down to the dspproject.com slash win, and there's all the details there of how you can go on the draw. Um, you can enter more than once, and uh, yeah, give it a go. The winner will be chosen completely at random, not by myself, but by an impartial judge. Um, and yeah, that is about it for this week. If you have any questions for me, um, feel free to leave a comment underneath this video. Otherwise, I will see you next week.